says that the land, that there's certain situations that happen that cause the land to be in a famine. I want to tell you, I want to start there. I had that last, but I'm going to start there. The scripture says over in the book of Samuel, David had just come to the kingship, but there was great famine in the land. Here's what I want to talk about. There was famine because they had broken the covenant. Let me tell you what happened. The Gibeonites during the land, uh, I'm sorry, during the times of Joshua had entered into a covenant with Israel. But when Saul came to power, he began to kill the Gibeonites. He killed them like they were water. He didn't care. He was brutal to them. He slaughtered them by the thousands. And it so upset God that he sent incredible famine into the land. And I want to tell you right now, let's don't be breaking no covenants with God. Let's don't be breaking any, any covenant. Let's don't make what I call a vow to God and then turn around and break it. I'm talking to everybody in here, including myself. Let's honor the covenant that we've made with God. Let me tell you what a covenant is. We've made an honor to, to honor God. And if we're going to honor God, I'm not saying we'll always be here, but if we can be here, we need to be in the house of God. We need to be doing the work of God's called us to do. We need to honor God with our life. This is the covenant that I'm talking about. I've been preaching for 27 years. 27 long years I've been preaching the gospel. I preach to cattle, goats. But I've got a church that I've been in now almost 16 years. I've never loved anybody any more than you. I've never desired to share the word with anybody more than you. But we, we know the church gets mad at the preacher when he preaches about sin. It's the truth. When the preacher preaches about sin, when the preacher calls out like it's supposed to be. But there's one of the things that I also want to encourage you about, about your borders and contending for your borders. The Lord spoke to me, and here's what he told me. It's a simple word. He said, I want you to tell my people. He said, to cut all ties with any type of immorality. See, immorality, anything that's not, I want to call it anything that's iffy, if it's iffy. Brother Harold, before I right before I met you, I lived over, I was still in Knoxville, I sat down in my house and there was something questionable coming on the television set, this true story. And I remember where I was sitting and when I sat down, the Holy Ghost sat down beside me. It was on a Saturday afternoon, Joyce. The Holy Ghost sat right down beside me and before, and, and you know what, I was getting ready to change the station and I remember God said, no, he said, I'm going to sit, he said, no. And then here's what he said, he said, Mark, he said, what can the world give you greater than what I can give you? I'll never forget that. It changed my whole life. I turned the television off, and I've really never turned it on since. Glory be to God. Satan wants you to pollute your inheritance. If you open a door, I know a lot of people have never heard this. Some of you, you may have just been born again just a few days, a few hours, even a few years. But you can open the door to the enemy. You can open doors to the enemy. The enemies can come in and he can destroy what God has for your life. He, he can mess up what God has for your life. He can stop it. He can hinder it. But if you give him no place, if you cut all ties with the devil, it's like I said one time, let's don't have a secret sin on a leash. Let's cut those ties. Somebody say amen. I want you to declare tonight through this spiritual inheritance that the Lord wanted me to declare to you tonight that the enemy has no legal rights or grounds, hallelujah, to your vineyard, amen. Now you remember in the old covenant, Naboth had a vineyard and Jezebel and, 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 and old Jezebel, Ahab wanted that vineyard so bad. But it belonged to somebody else, it belonged to Naboth. And Naboth was a fine man. He was a man of faith. He was, he was a man that God loved. And he told Ahab, I'll not sell it because it's part of my inheritance. Don't ever sell it out. Don't ever sell out cheap. Don't ever sell out anything. You don't ever, don't say, whether well, there's a price. 
Tell the devil that there's no price. When he comes to your house, Brother Harold, I had a vision one time of joy, I'm sorry, of, of, of a hell and jewel, and, and, they, and they were like sitting at a poker table. And I saw them, I said, my God, God, what are they doing? They gambling? He said, no, son. He said, they're all in with me, amen. Hallelujah, glory. And that's the way we need to, I feel the Holy Ghost. We need to be all in. Somebody shout all in. I'm all in with God, amen. Just a little bit long, I'm not going to keep you, but this inheritance. I went to my dad's house one day, years ago. And my daddy was not like he is now. I don't know if y'all have ever had anybody that thought you was crazy when you got saved. Your family members are the hardest people that you ever deal with. Come on, give me an amen. They are, like Brother Gillis said, it's hard to minister to your family. Well, this particular day, there's this, this wild guy named Wally Kirkham. Jamie, remember him? Maybe Brother Bill might remember Wally. I'm not sure if he does or not. Wally called me up on the phone. He said, Marcus, he said, I heard what you said about your daddy. He said, you told me your mom and dad were out of town. He said, I'm coming over and I'm bringing this wild fellow with me. He brought this guy named Hoopy Vickers, Brother Hoop. Ooh, you talking about off the map. You think I'm off the map. It's, ooh, it's cool. Zoom. So Brother Hoop shows up. He got oil. He had so many bottles of oil. I said, man, this don't dump it on my mom and dad's beautiful carpet. Anything. So wait, this is a true story. So we got in the house. And remember what I'm talking about. I'm talking about contending for what's yours. Contending for your borders. Contending for your spiritual inheritance. And we got in there, man, and People can say you're crazy, whatever. This is a true story. And we got in there and we got to anointing everything. I mean, man, his liquor bottles downstairs, his, his coffee cups. I believe in this stuff, by the way. I mean, man, we were just, we were doing it all. We were pleading the blood, you know. And then I got, something told me to turn up. He's got one of the, my dad's got wall to wall sound. He's got one of these big old, uh, systems in his house. You know, you can turn it upstairs. It's kind of like an intercom or downstairs, you know. He's all fancy, rancy. My, what is it? What do you always call these types of people? Fancy. Anyway, so I, so what I did, Frida, is I turned the music up. I never had it ever in his house. He never listened to Christian music, brother, brother Gillis. And we got to turn that music up. Well, the front door. Now the front door is open, but the screen door, and it's a big, heavy door. It's it, it's locked. God is my witness. We got to going through that house, and we turned that music up, started anointing everything. We come back in the living room, and something come flying down the hallway. You could feel it. I mean, it was like a wind. It went down the stairs. The front door flung open, and it shut back, and that spirit run out of that place. I believe it. Because you've got, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost, and so do you. You've got to contend. I've done this, church. I've been doing this a long time. But you've got to contend. For your spiritual inheritance. My mother was in a church. And it was a church where the preacher would curse. After church, they would go and they would drink. They would have this thing called sherry. Let's go drink some sherry. True story. They go in, they get obliterated. They, they, they mean, you know, the preacher, he'd want to kiss on all the women. You know, I mean, I'm just, I'm telling you the truth. So, buddy, my heart was broken because my mom was still in that church. And they had this hall called the parish hall. It was a part of the church. It was called a, a parish hall, not P-A-R-I-C-H. So I went up to this church during this time. I just believe this way. And I wanted my family to be delivered out of this church and go back to their roots so bad. And I went up there every day and I drove around that church and I said, Lord, they're perishing right here. And I turned the A into an E. And I remember, Freed, I told God that again and again and again. And one day my mom called me out of the blue. And she said, son, and she'd been there all her life, every single day of her life. She had sit in a church where it was dead that nothing ever happened. It was there was. I'm telling you, church. I know. I used, I grew up in it. There was nothing there. But one day, glory be to God. Come on, God delivered my mother out of that church, sent her back to the roots 
of her Baptist faith. See, my, my great-grandfather, y'all don't know this, was a fireball Baptist tent revivalist named F.P. Bells. My grandmother was a saint of God. Now, my mom's mom was a real deal. And this man, Brother Gillis, he got his arm cut off in, in, a, in a train accident. But he preached, he'd go all over. He, and I, I think Brother Gary, I think Brother Gary, you remember his name. You told me that you remembered him. We talked about him one day. But you know, thank God Almighty that we can contend for our borders. And you know, and today as I'm preaching this message, it may not mean a thing to you right now. It may, not, it may not be something in front of you right now. It may not come up right now in your life, but it might tomorrow or it might a month from now because this inheritance. Moses, when he was first in the land, he had no power there. But he left the land and he went to another place for 40 long years. And then one day on the back side of the desert, which I could have read to you, is when, he, when there was a bush, hallelujah, that burned with fire. Does y'all remember it? Glory to God. I'm going to preach this a little bit now. There was a bush that burned with fire. And aren't you glad today that's a type? It don't matter what the devil tries to do. You and I can never be consumed, Brother Harold. We can never be brought down again. Amen. He, he, I mean, he had seen a million bushes roll across the tundra. See, and them bushes, old bull rush, they catch on fire and disintegrate. But he said, oh, but he looked aside. He turned us. Oh, let's turn aside. Whoa, glory. We ain't turned aside, Brother Gillis, just like you and I did one day. He said, Brother Gillis. He said, Brother Gillis, you're up here fishing. He said, you can't do it without me. Now, hello, hello. You can't do it without me, praise God. You can have the hooks and the tackle and the bait and the fishing rod and the boat and everything you want, but you can't get them without me, praise God. You can't reel them in. You can't catch them. You can't do anything apart from me. He turned aside. God said, now. He said, I want you to realize that you and I have a covenant because of Abraham. Do you know that we've not been destroyed many times? We should have been because we have a covenant. I believe there's been times that I've done things in my life. I know there was one time I thought for sure God would destroy me. But he loved me even more. I never have. I don't understand that kind of love. I, I just don't. But I understand now about the covenant. It's, not, it's the covenant. Thank God Almighty for the blood. Aren't you glad for the blood? Every one of you all, if your blood bought, you can raise your hands and you can sing a sigh of relief because of the blood. He said, Moses, I'm sending you back to the land. I'm sending you back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Moses began to argue with God. Oh, I can't. I'm, I can't speak. I, I'm not a good orator. I, 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 they're not going to listen to me. And God got angry. He said, all right. He said, that's all right. He said, I'll send your brother Aaron to go with you then. God wasn't going to let him get out of it. He ain't going to let me and you get out of it either. He's going he gonna to send somebody to go with Instead of sending Aaron now, he sent the Holy Ghost to go with us. Amen. So he sent the Holy Ghost. Aaron was the first high priest. Aaron would become the man who wore the ephod and had the, the Urim and Thummim. He was the first high priest, Aaron. God said in his word, he said, I'll do great things that you don't even know, not even know of. But I believe in this hour that if you and I will contend for our borders, if we'll, if we'll claim the inheritance, you've got a covenant with God. How many know you've got a covenant with God? I mean, have you, are you mindful of your covenant? Do you, do God wants me to ask you tonight. This is my last point. He says, are they mindful of the covenant? I, 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 I want you to understand that, that it doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter who you're with. It doesn't matter if you're preaching in a, a building or outside or if it's a tent or, or if you're preaching somewhere up to the poor or if you're walking the streets, glory to God, or if it's your workplace or at your home or wherever you are, you and I have a covenant. Be mindful of that covenant, hallelujah, that we have. First time I went to Temple Baptist Church, There's an altar call given in front of 600 people. I was 21 years old, and I got up. I never told you all this, and I walked all the way down. 
all the way.